Oh, Lori, we're ready for that call, so if you could put it through in about five minutes. Thank you. Mark, why don't you take the call here with Amanda? Ross and I can take it in his office. Yes, right. As a matter of fact, I have to get back to my office, too. I'll see you later. All right. Amanda, you have got to stop this. I don't know what you're talking about. It happened again. Your father just made a perfectly sensible solution that we both take the call here together, and you acted as though he suggested we go to bed together. That's not true. Every time I'm in the same room with you, you try... Yes, Lori. Yes, we're ready. You can put through the call through right now. Uh, no, Mr. McCord, I haven't heard a thing, but uh, I'll give you a call as soon as we do. Yeah, Mom, Kelly, Louise are just fine. I will. Uh, listen, I'll be here having breakfast for the next hour or so, so if anything happens, you want to give me a call, I'll be here, okay? Right. Bye-bye. Well, Mr. McCord sends his best. You're awfully chummy with Mr. McCord. So? Let me put it another way. Why are you so chummy with Mr. McCord? You're always on the phone with him about one thing or another. Because he used to be Noah's boss. He cares about her. She cares about him. I keep hoping she'll call him. Tony, are you keeping something from me? Would I keep anything from a good-looking thing hey, like hey, you? Hey, hey, no, 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 don't not, try to get around me, Tony. Sister's been gone almost a week. Nobody's heard a word from her. I know she'd at least call and find out how the baby is. She doesn't want to call me. She could call Gracie, but not a word, not a word. And now you, you're on the phone with Miss McCord in cahoots about something well, or other. I don't know. What are you, crazy? You're the one that told me to go out to McCord's to begin with. You remember? So? So what? So, everyone is worried about it. And we keep in contact with each other in case she calls. Why is everyone worried about her? What are you keeping from me? What are you talking about? You're worried, too. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with Noah. She's fine, I'm sure. You... I'll get it. Hello? For you. Hello. It's Polly. Uh, you know that call you thought this guy Loomis might be getting? Yeah. It came through this morning. I, I stalled the guy, and I told him that Loomis was out, and I asked him to leave a number, but he wouldn't. He just said he'd call back. Did he? Yeah, but this time he called on the payphone in the lobby. One of the residents here was standing next to me, and uh, he said quick he'd run up to room 9 and get Loomis, and I couldn't do nothing to stop him, so Loomis got the Come call. on, Polly. Can't you keep track of those winos for 10 minutes? Wait a minute. Loomis is still on the phone here in the lobby. If you hurry up, you can get... Tony? Tony, where are you? <sighs> okay, Silas. I understand. Are you sure? Because I don't want to have to keep going over it with you. Well, neither do I. I'm going stir crazy sitting in that room. Why the hell did you make me stay in a dump like this? Because it's just a few doors away from the rear and so that you can keep an eye on them if you have to. Now you listen, and you listen good. I'm going to be calling McCord later, and I'm going to tell him where and when he can deliver the golden cradle and the other artifacts. And I'll call you the minute that I'm finished talking to him, and then I want you to rent a car and stand by. Be ready to hit the road, pick up the stuff, be out of Springfield fast. No problem. In a dump like this, they make you pay in advance. I'm gonna save the cracks. Just be up here fast. And once you're up here and I've got that cradle... I know what you're gonna say. Then we can finish off Nola Reardon for good. Award-winning Guiding Light. Cigar, huh, Paul? Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Hey, 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 what? 
to advance. When the chips are down, the old gang sticks together, right? Huh? Yeah, boy. So, uh, what's, what's going on? I can't tell you. I really appreciate your help. Okay. And it's about half a day's drive. Didn't you hear what I was saying about finishing off Nola for good? Silas, I don't want to be a part of another murder. I didn't like that Professor Taylor business. That just happened because I lost my temper because he wouldn't tell me the things that I want to know. Now, don't you worry. We won't have to do anything to get rid of Nola. We'll just leave her on the freighter. No food, no water, and rats for company. That'll be it. Yeah, I guess. What's the matter, Jamie? Losing your nerve. What do you mean, losing my nerve? I am who's staying in Springfield like a sitting duck, and who's nice and safe on that freighter? I told you that nothing's going to happen. McCord won't call the police because he's paranoid about them. Helena told me that a long time ago. Not too paranoid to talk to Scotland Yard about Taylor's death. He talked to them. He didn't call them in. All right, Jamie, you want out? You want to give up half of that bundle we're going to make from that cradle and those other artifacts? You could retire on that, you know, Jamie. You never have to do another job as long as you live. I don't want out. It's just that... What? You don't trust me? Listen, I'm the one who should be worried. You could just pick up that cradle, take off. I'd never see a cent of that money. You know I couldn't do that. You know the people who are going to melt it down. And you've lined up the fence here. No. I'm in. And I won't double-cross you. Mm-hmm. You better not. Okay, now you just sit tight in that room so that when I call you this time, I don't have to call you twice. What do you mean? I've been in my room. The whole time? Yeah. I called you before, and they said that you were out. The guy who answered wanted me to leave my number. I said I'd call back. Well, I just went down the hall for a minute to take a shower. You can shower when all this is over. Right now, you just stay put. There, Polly. So, like I was saying, come on, this girl's got the body hey, of an angel. She huh? says she what? loves you. Hey. What can I tell you about that, huh? A call came in for me before. Why didn't you let me know? I went up to your room. You weren't there. What do you want from me? I should send out an APB? I'm going back to my room. If I get any more calls, I want you to come and get me. Do you understand? Now, that's a real piece of scum. You sure you know what you're getting yourself into? A guy like that would kill you just as soon as look at you. No, I'll tell you the truth, Paul. I don't know what I'm getting into, but I don't have any choice. I can make a call. Can use your phone? Thanks. May I join you? Sh sure. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry I missed you this morning. I uh, forgot something. I had to go back to my apartment before I came back to work. I left when the day nurse came in. Uh, look, I really appreciate what you and uh, Hillary and Evie are doing, but I do feel guilty about taking up your free time. I've got to do something about hiring a permanent night nurse. Well, it's kind of hard right now with everyone on vacation, but, well, I'm sure by the time the end of the summer comes, Mrs. Tyner will find someone on a permanent basis. Hey, Justin. Hi, Kelly. I'm looking for you. Uh, I was wondering if you had some time to uh, go over some things before I had my cardiology review. Uh, well, I don't have time right now, but uh, uh, why don't you stop up at my office a little later and we'll... Well, for the look of you, we've got a number of things to talk about. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait a minute, Kelly. Excuse me. Did uh, you go to St. Croix? Yeah. And? Well, uh... Things didn't turn out exactly like I'd hoped, and they're still far from perfect, but they will be. And I have you to thank for it. Me? Why me? Well, that talk we had in Ed's office, you know, when you were talking about life and time and how important they are, that's what made me decide to go on down to St. Croix. Of course, it was the right thing to do. So thanks. Well, in that case, you're entirely welcome. All right. So I'll, I'll see you up there. See you up there in five. <clears throat> what are you smiling about? You. That was very sweet of you. Sweet? Yes. Look, everyone knew how upset Kelly was when he came back from St. Croix, and you were the one that reached out and got through to him. Good things have a way of coming back, Justin.
shower today because my two o'clock dye job canceled, so I figured I'd come by to see if you heard. Well, to see how you. Let's not play games with each other. Have you heard from Nola? No, have you? No, not a word, and I am worried sick, and now her brother is acting strange. What do you mean, strange? Oh, he's always on the phone with Mr. McCord, and this morning he came over and he got a phone call from some other friend. He got so excited, he went running out of here, he didn't even hang up the phone. And then he came back and said he had to get right over to Mr. McCord. What for? I don't know. Had something to do with Nola, though, I'm sure. Well, it had to. I mean, the only thing that Tony and Mr. McCord could have in common would be Nola, but what can it be about? I don't even want to think about it. <sighs> have, have Floyd been coming down to see the baby? Well, he was coming around regularly, man, and then he stopped doing that. Oh, honey, everybody is acting so peculiar, and all they'll ever say to me is, don't worry so much. And, of course, it makes me worry even more. You had lunch? Oh, no, no, thanks. Is that homemade? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I'll have a piece of that. Sure. Well, how is everything with you, honey? You still seeing Pete? Well, he's now, you know, he's all right for now, but nothing forever. Not like love. I mean, how many times can you go bowling? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. How's Kelly Louise? Oh, she's fine. I want to take the chill off this bottle before I give her lunch. Well, what happened to the bottle warmer that um, Mrs. Renfield gave Nola? I don't know. I guess she forgot to bring it with her. I keep meaning to call him about it, but I always forget. Mm. Look, I have my car with me, so why don't um, I drive you over there now? Oh, thanks, honey, but I really have to give the baby lunch. Mm. Okay. Well, you know, but I was thinking, if we go now, maybe we can catch Tony with Mr. Cor McCord and find out exactly what's going on. That is a very good idea. I think I'll ask Mrs. Peterson to give the baby lunch. Okay. Um, I'll go wait in my car. Uh... Now, Anthony, I expect to hear from Silas any moment now, so we must be prepared to move into action. Loomis is our only contact. Loomis is a real creep. Mr. I know, I know, I know, but he is our only contact with Silas. Now, when Silas calls and tells us where and when to move the cradle, we must figure out a way for you to follow Loomis in hopes that he'll lead us to Silas and No, no problem, Mr. McCrudd. There really careful, is a secret careful, passage. Careful. I never believed Nola. Yeah, yeah. It uh, came with the house. Uh, uh, Put it here, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because of Helena, I must close these doors and lock them. Wow, look at that. It just brought me nothing but bad luck from the first time I found it. First, Charles Taylor murdered in London, and then our ill-fated trip to the island, and now Nola. These jewels real? Oh, yes. And the whole thing solid gold? Yes, Anthony. <laughs> Where'd you ever find a safe place to keep it? There is one place in this house that is very safe. But I uh, think we should put the cradle in the crate I have for it. You know, Mr. McCord, uh, crate or no crate, this thing's pretty heavy. I think Loomis is going to need some help to be moving that around. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I only hope we don't have to wait too long. What's something like that worth, anyway, Mr. McCord? Well, it's hard to assess its enormous value, Anthony. But if it can be used to return Nola safely to us, I'll be glad to be rid of it once and for all. I am glad to see you finally signing that. I thought I was going to be negotiating the Lewis oil contract for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm glad it's over with, too. Now then, about our dinner meeting tonight. Would it be more convenient if I came to your house? No. Uh, I've, I've been spending too much time there. I'd love to get out someplace. All right. Sounds good. Name the place. <laughs> I don't know. Where do you think? <laughs> well, uh... I have to go to the hospital this afternoon and talk to Justin. Then I want to stop at my office and take care of a few things. So, I don't know. Why don't I come to your house at 7 o'clock? We can decide where to go then. Fine. Ross, I know that this has been a very difficult time for you. And I, I just want to thank you for all your support and for your friendship, too. No, no, you don't have to thank me. Well, you've always been there for me. I'll always appreciate your concern. Oh, oh Jennifer. Excuse me. Um... Amanda, these are the latest reports uh, from the New York office. I thought you'd want to see them right away. Yes, I would. Thank you. Amanda, I will see you at 7 o'clock then. All right. All right. 
Mother. I, I just wanted to thank you for all the good work you did in New York. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad I could help. I hope you were able to take some time off and relax while you were out there. Well, I was uh, after Mark arrived. It was wonderful. But then, you know, I, I had a very strange experience. Uh, well, we rented a car and we, we drove out to Long Island to, to visit his mother. I knew she was in a nursing home, but I had no idea her condition was so serious. She seems so far removed from, from any kind of reality. I, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. It made me realize how, how very little I know about Mark. Have you heard from Morgan? Oh, yeah. Uh, she's very optimistic about working out her problems with Kelly. That reminds me, uh, I wanted to ask your help on something. What? She and Kelly have an anniversary coming up pretty soon, and uh, I wanted to do a party for them. Mark suggested we might do it at Laurel Falls, where they were married. And I was hoping that, that you might want to help me with it. Of course, I'd be glad to help. Good. Amanda, I know this is a very difficult time for you. But, you know, I, I never dreamed that my life could change. And it did. And I guess all I want to say is it can for you, too. light in a moment. This portion of Guiding Light is presented by delicious mountain-grown Folgers, mountain-grown for rich flavor, and by Oxidol. Oxidol bleaches as it washes for sparkling whites. Anthony, will you help me get this ready to deliver to Loomis? Yeah, sure, Mr. Very careful, Anthony. Now, yeah. Fritz. Yeah. Fritz, if Miss Manzini asked you anything about the cradle, you are to say that you have never seen it. No, I won't say a word to anyone. Uh, but I saw a police car drive by the house today. I've seen one drive by several times each day since Miss Nola's been gone. Yes, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, if they do stop here, I want you to say that... <coughs> Fritz, will you please get that? Yes, if it's the police, let me know immediately. Miss Middleton, how nice to see you. I thought it was the police. Why would you expect the police? No reason. Just forget that I said that. If you are here to see Anthony, I'm afraid he's rather busy helping Mr. McCord in the laboratory. I'm afraid I can't disturb them. However, they should be back soon. Oh, well, thank you, but that's not the reason I came over. I, uh, I was looking for the bottle warmer, you know, that you gave Nola for the baby, and I wondered if she left it here. Well, if she did, it must be with the hot plate and the other baby feeding things. Would you like to go to the kitchen? You could help me look for it. Sure. Well, let me help, too. Well, that won't be necessary, Miss Middleton. Why don't you stay here? Fritz will keep you company. <laughs> How is Kelly? Um, B, please don't be too long. I have that two o'clock dye job, you know. I missed seeing you, Miss Middleton. <laughs> let me get the dog. Why don't you drop by sometime to say hello, uh, even if Miss Knoll is not here, you? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, now, why would Tony be in the lab? He doesn't know anything about archaeology. Uh, I, I just know he's helping in Mr. McCord. Hmm. Did you see Nola the night she left here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of mood was she in? Uh, very, very sad. I felt very sorry for her. Oh, let me get that for you. 
This is Wuthering Heights! Fritz! She would have never left here without this book. It was very special to her. Hey, 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 where are you going? Hi. Oh, uh, I'm gonna go talk to Kelly, but if he's busy, I'll be back. Why do I get the feeling we're second choice? Hi, <laughs> uh, am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. Sit down. As a matter of fact, I was waiting for some victim to come by that I could complain to about this schedule. Oh, crazy, huh? It's incredible. I mean, not only do I have all the increased work and late nights of an internship over my clerkship, but now I have to make up all the work that I missed in St. Croix. Oh, I think it'll work out. You didn't really uh, lose that time in St. Croix, did you? No, I guess I didn't. I mean, even though I made a complete mess of things and I sort of went crazy, I think the upshot of it will be positive. Well, I don't think a few rocky moments do any relationship any harm. Makes you uh, reaffirm how much you love and care about each other. Now, how come you always know exactly the right thing to say? Well, that's what friends are for, right? <laughs> Has um, Floyd said anything else about this temporary custody of Kelly Louise? I mean, now that Noel is out of town. Yeah, he mentioned it last night, but I changed the subject. We um, kind of disagree about it. Hmm. I've been wondering about something. I mean, I know Floyd's really scattered right now, but... Um, I know he loves you very much. I always thought you loved him, too. I do. Well, if you said you're going to marry him, why don't you set the date? Katie, I just think we should wait until all this custody suit thing is taken care of, that's all. Well, there's two ways of looking at that, you know. I mean, once he married you, maybe he would be so happy he'd forget about the custody suit. Do, uh, do either one of you know where Floyd is? Yeah, he's in a meeting, but he's meeting me here for lunch, and I know he wants to talk to you. What happened to your face? I walked into a wall. Oh. Well, yeah, well, it's... Kelly, don't. Look, I'm not going to get into a fight. Josh? How you doing, Kelly? Uh, I want to talk to you. Yeah, uh, fine. Uh, I, I just, uh, I have to find Floyd first. I just told you, Floyd's in a meeting. Look, this won't take long. Right. Step over here. Listen, I only have a couple of things to say to you. First of all, it was wrong of me to jump to the wrong conclusions about Morgan. And I shouldn't have let myself lose my temper and go crazy down there in the yeah, alley. I, the way uh, I did. I'm I not finished. To explain. I'm not finished. Now, look, I know that it was no coincidence that you just happened to end up in the same hotel in St. Croix, of all places, where Morgan was staying. And I also know that you made your decision to go down there after you ran into me in the Springfield airport that day. Now, look, Josh, Morgan is a very trusting person, and she would never think the worst about anyone. But I know. I know why you went down there, and I know what you went down there for. So this time, I'm going to say it very calmly and very rationally. You stay away from my wife. Listen, uh, Kelly, <clears throat> Morgan and I are just good friends. She was very upset. Yeah, well, listen to me. I don't want... Sink. I don't want you to be friends with Morgan. Do you hear me? I don't like you, and I don't trust you. <sighs> Come on, Kelly. Look, it's very simple, man. Just stay away from my wife, okay? Hey, don't you think Morgan should have something to say about this? I mean, what, are you picking your friends for enough? Yeah, but when I get through talking to her, she's going to understand what you've been trying to do. It only works one way with you, doesn't it? I mean, you can have all the female friends that you want, but Morgan can't have any Look, don't push friends. me, Josh. Just stay away from my wife. Do you hear me? For good. For your own good. Well, I better get back on duty. Study hard. You'll do fine on the exam. You really got told off, didn't you? Don't start with me, Candy. We have a few things to talk about. Well, I was just about to go. No, you don't have to go anywhere. You told me you were meeting Floyd here for lunch. You sit there and you listen to me. Why is Floyd still working here? He just cut down on all I his I want hours. him out of here completely. Well, I can't do that, Josh. I don't want to hear can't from you, Leslie Ann. You can and you will. And what, what's the story? I thought you were going to keep him from uh, pursuing this custody suit garbage. Well, that's impossible. He's already thinking about getting temporary custody of uh, Kelly Louise since Nola's out of town now. Leslie Ann, if you don't want Floyd to find out the truth about you, you do what I want and do it now. Fritz, Nola would have never left you without this book. I know it. 
I hate to see you so upset, Miss Middleton. Is, is there something I can do for you? Uh, why don't you come and uh, sit down, huh? Fritz, is, isn't there anything you can do? Maybe you can feed the dogs. Well, no, there's nothing. I just stay here, keep you company, till Mrs. Renfield and Mrs. Reedon come back. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's Gracie, what are you doing? Well, um, B and I were, were, were in the house and we're looking for the bottle warmer that Mrs. Renfield gave Nola and she thought it was here, so they're looking for it now. Uh, Fritz, why don't you go into the kitchen and see if you can help them find Kelly Louise's yes. things? Look at this. What's this, Grace? That's Nola's copy of Weathering Heights, and it meant a lot to her. She would have never left here without that book. Uh, what's so special about a book? Well, Mr. McCord gave this book to her Christmas time, and, and don't you remember giving her Weathering Heights? Uh, Weathering Heights, Miss Middleton. It may have meant something to her then, but not now. When she left here, she was so hurt and angry, I doubt very much if she would uh, take anything that would uh, remind her of me. No, no, that's not true. That book meant a lot to her. I know it. And if the book is still here, it means that Nola didn't mean to leave. And I think we should call Lieutenant Wyatt uh, right away. Gracie, I think that Nola was just upset and in a hurry, and she forgot the book. That's all. No, no, I'm telling you, I know Nola. She wouldn't have oh, left Tony. her right. Tony, I'm so glad you're here. Mrs. Renfield and I looked all over the kitchen, and all the babies things are gone. Nola must have taken all of Kelly Louise's things. Everything. Why is it surprise you, Mom? That's just what she said she was going to do. She said she was going to take the baby's things and not the baby. Where is your head, Tony? I want you to call Lieutenant Wyatt right now and tell him all about this. Yeah, thanks for coming to get me. Hello? What took you so long? I got you as soon as I could. What's happened? All right, I'm going to call Quentin McCord tonight and give him the plan. Great. But something's bothering me. Oh, really? What's that? If Nola Reardon's family don't hear from her soon, they're going to call in the police, no matter what that goodbye letter said. I've taken care of that. How? If that dear little Nola write another letter to her family that will keep them off our backs and the police for as long as we need. Now, let's not waste any more time. Here's the plan. New flexible fabric bandage is made of a breathable elastic fabric. So it flexes when you flex and stretches when you stretch. Try new flexible fabric bandage from Band-Aid brand. It moves with you, so it stays with you. I said that it was impossible to believe. You really didn't believe it, did you? I didn't believe that I could go to this thin pad and get the same protection I had for my thick one. Yes, I've changed my mind. What? changed your mind, Tammy? Sure and Natural convinced me. Sure and Natural took out maxi bulk and replaced it with a super fiber system so the pad can be thin. It really works, honest. I've always wanted a pad that I could be comfortable with and yet have the protection that I wanted. I have thick pad protection in a thinner pad. You're not going to go back to a thick pad? Oh, no. Why would I want to go back to a thick pad? That's ridiculous. I'm going to stick with Sure and Natural. Sure and Natural. You'll never go back to thick. When you find something great, why give it up? Boy, are you gonna get it now. What? Look at that greasy mess you made. Al Mom just drove up. Give me something fast. Here, 409 works fast. Yeah? Before you start to wipe. 409 special grease dissolvers cut through grease Hurry. fast. 409 is so effective, it starts to work before you start to wipe. Hey, that shines. What have you two been up to? Mm -hmm. Formula 409. It starts to work before you start to wipe. And now save money with 409's new replacement bottle. Just reuse our trigger. You know, now that the Lewis oil deal is set, I think we can all relax. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of Amanda's uncertainty was, was due to her tension about that. I'm afraid Amanda's problems are somewhat more complex. I think she may be in serious emotional trouble. Well, I thought so, too, but I don't know. She seems a little more in control now. And she is seeing Sarah McIntyre. Is that where she is now? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Sarah helped her with her problems last summer, and I, I certainly hope she can help her now. Hello, hello, Mark. I was just about to leave. I thought I'd check and see if H.B. Lewis called back. Oh, yes, he did. And we're all relieved to know the deal is signed and set. Anyway. I better get back to my office. I'll see you later. See you, see you later. later. <laughs>
Alan, I'm glad we could have a few minutes together. I'd like to discuss the Madrid trip. Yes, well, now that the contracts are signed, I think you should get there as soon as possible so you can get everything ready for action in case that oil strike comes in. Well, I agree with you, and that's why I'd like to ask you a favor. What is it? Well, I think you're right about Amanda accompanying me to Madrid to learn more about the operation there, but I get the distinct feeling that she doesn't want to. Yes, I've noticed the same hesitation on her part, but she's wrong. I'm only sorry that when I was president, I didn't spend more time in our foreign offices. I just wondered if you could talk with her and impress upon her how important it is for her to go. Sure, I'd be glad to. Thank you. And please, uh, thank Hope last for a lovely evening last night and give her my best. I shall, as soon as she gets home. Okay, bye-bye. Justin, here's a paper you have to sign to uh, legally turn the shop over to Evie. If indeed you're quite sure that's what you want to do. Yes, it is. I've given it a great deal of thought, and it's what Jackie would have wanted. And besides, it's an opportunity to thank Evie for all of her help. It is not just another way to erase more memories of Jackie, is it? No, I, uh, I realize that those memories are precious now. I regret giving away a lot of the things that reminded me of her right after she died. But hopefully I'm beyond that now, and I'm looking forward to getting my life back on track. Good. Have you talked to Philip lately? As a matter of fact, I tried to call him this morning, but uh, I couldn't reach him, so I left a message. I want to go up there this month and talk to him about Jackie. Of course, we can't talk about everything, but we do have a great deal to discuss. Hmm. What are you going to do if Philip decides to take his uh, senior year at Springfield High rather than Lincoln Prep? Well, I'm going to tell him it's fine with me. Hi. Hello, Hope. Oh, oh hi, Hope. Hi. How, how was your vacation? I was very nice. Uh, gave me a chance to do a lot of thinking. Oh, good. I'm glad. Listen, I just called home and Emily told me that Philip called and left a message that he wanted Alan to uh, call him back. So if it's anything important, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll call you and let you know. Excuse me, I want to go talk to Amanda. All right. I assume Alan has not told Hope about Philip. Hi. Hi. I uh, was looking for you. Oh, sit down. Please. Oh, thank you. What, what are you doing here at the hospital today? Uh, I had an appointment with Sarah. Oh, I see. I hope it went well. Look, Amanda, there's something I've been wanting to say to you for a while now. You and I used to be very close friends. You helped me through a very difficult time with Alan, and I helped you through your problems with Ben. And I've always been very grateful to you for that. It's just that I've felt very uncomfortable around you no, since... No, Amanda, I... that's, that's not why I brought it up. I'd like us to be good friends again. I'd like that, too. <laughs> good. Oh. You know, I know since Jennifer's gotten married, you know, well, you two are very close, and I know you spend a lot of time together in the past, and I know maybe now she doesn't have much time for you, so... Well, I was thinking, I, I know what it's like to be lonely and kind of off, and I wanted you to know that I'm, I'm here if you want to talk to me. Oh, but, no, look, Amanda, I know you're having problems, and maybe it would help you to talk to someone. I, I can't talk about them to anyone, even Sarah. But Ross, yeah? are you going back to the office? Yes, I am. Oh, well, I sent the, the company car and driver back. C could you give me a lift? Oh, sure, good. Come on. Amanda, you haven't even finished your coffee. Oh, that's right. I, well, I didn't really want it anyway. We'll talk uh, soon, Hope. Take care, Hope. Yeah, bye. From day to day, a lot happens to a woman's body. As a result, her body responds, reacts. It changes daily. That's why you may want the daily protection of FDS Feminine Deodorant Spray. When you use FDS, you can count on protection every day. Protection that's designed for a woman's body. To help you stay fresh and confident, use FDS every day. Because your body changes every day. This week, Jack fears Jill's motive. She's a threat to you. What are you afraid of? If Dad marries her, we lose half of our inheritance. It could cost us everything. Everything that should be rightfully ours would be hers. And that's what she's after. And that's why we've got to stop her. Do you understand that? And then, wedding bells ring for Jeff and Annie. This ring I give you, in token and pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding devotion. Share the romance weekdays on The Young and the Restless and As the World Turns. Philip, why don't we talk this over when Hope and I come to see you? 
Yes, of course we'd like you to live with us. You know you're always welcome here. But we have to consider Justin's feelings. Uh, right, well, w yeah, we'll talk about it when we see you, son. Right. Goodbye, son. How's Philip? Uh, he and Freddie have decided to finish high school at Springfield High. Philip wants to live with us. Oh, great. I'll, I'll fix up the spare room for him. Alan, you, you do want him to live with us, don't you? Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course. But it's not quite that simple. I, I don't understand. What is it? Darling, there's something I have to tell you. All right, what? You know that Philip is not my natural son. Yes. What you don't know is that Jackie and Justin were his natural parents. What? When Jackie and Justin were married the first time, Jackie found out that Justin had been unfaithful to her and she sued for divorce. Almost immediately after leaving him, she discovered that she was pregnant with Justin's child, but she never told him. I was married to Elizabeth at the time. She was also pregnant. Elizabeth's doctor told me that he was almost certain that her baby would be stillborn. But he didn't feel he could tell her because her emotional condition was so precarious at the time. So we arranged to have another baby substituted for the child that would be born dead. What I didn't know at the time was that that child was Philip. Justin told me the truth just a few weeks ago. I, I'm still having a hard time adjusting to it. I, I gather Philip doesn't know about this. No, uh, Jackie and Justin felt that they, uh, they didn't want to tell him until he was old enough to deal with it. Well, Alan, what, what will happen if, if Philip decides to come back here to live in Springfield and then Justin decides that he wants Philip to live with him? Well, that's something we're all going to have to sit down and sort out. Uh, whatever's best for Philip. The one thing that I've learned is that no matter how much time goes by, the, the deceptions of the past always catch up with you. But I'm going to do my best to see that Philip isn't harmed by them. Here you are, Miss Amanda. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Miss Amanda, are you feeling all right? Yes, why? I'm just not used to seeing you taking a drink this early in the evening. I had a nerve-wracking day. Ross Marler will be coming over at about 7 o'clock. Maggie, do you think you could make some hors d'oeuvres? Oh, of course. Thank you. Maggie. Uh, I want to thank you for, for living in now. I can't tell you what a comfort it is knowing you're here. I'm very glad you asked me to. I was worried about you living alone in this big house. Mrs. Peterson says she never came back after McCord's. I bet she went to the police. Tony, maybe your mom should go to the police. No, that's the wrong thing to do. I... Tony, is there something you're not telling me? Yeah, there is, but I can't tell you without endangering other people. Well, all right, all right. I don't want to push. Look, I got a couple hours before I got to go to work. Uh, you want to go for a swim or something? Listen, I know you want to stay here and talk to your mom. Why don't we do that? How do I get so lucky, huh? I don't know. Ma, where have you been? Oh, I... 
When I left the McCords, I knew that I had to go somewhere by myself. I went to the movies. Only it turned out to be a Betty Davis movie, and I couldn't think of anything except your sister. I wish you would have called or something. You know, I've been worried sick about you. <gasps> What's the matter? It's your sister's handwriting. I know it anywhere. Oh. Oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, uh, dear Mom. I'm really sorry about running off the way I did, but I just couldn't face being in Springfield anymore. Don't worry about me. I am just fine. And take care of Kenna Louise. I'll send for her when I'm all settled. Love, Nola. Where's this from? Uh, oh, let me see. Um, Hollywood, California, wouldn't you know? Isn't that just like your sister? Something wrong here. Something very wrong. might like some sherry. No, thank you. What were you thinking of just now when I walked into the room? I was thinking about Nola. I was thinking about how much I miss her. And how we sometimes take for granted those things that mean so much to us and never realize it till we lose them. I'm sure that if you... Well, I hope that isn't Helen. She's been out of the house all evening. She's probably with that terrible Loomis person. Anthony would have told me if she were. I still don't trust her. Mr. McCourt's residence. Just one moment, please. It's Silas Crocker. This has been the award-winning Guiding Light. by Lily Rubin Salon, South Southwest. Sportswear by Gloria Vanderbilt for Morjani International. Guiding Light.